Hi everyone, I am Cornelius of Voice Studio East and this is the 12th installment of the Singing Demystified video series. Previously in this series we learned one way of singing at softer volumes without falsetto, namely mixed voice. But to achieve that comparative softness, mixed voice relies on simply restraining the sound, which makes it less extroverted and potentially also less expressive. Thus, today we are going to explore a different approach for softer volumes, namely cry register. It sounds like this. There's no need to complicate our time is short. This is our fate. I'm yours. Cry register may resemble chess register a lot, but differs in being slightly mellower and having a distinct sound of crying, typically associated with upturned eyebrows and a sad affect. Although, as my example showed, it can also be made to sound joyous, as in crying tears of joy. It is distinct from a cried mix in that it retains the forward boldness of chest register, whereas a cried mix sounds restrained with the vowels becoming a little bit muddy. This difference is most easily heard on a siren. Here is cried mix. Ah. And here is cry register. Ah. You will notice that cry register sounds louder and a bit more piercing than cried mix. It can also serve as a great intermediate register between chest register and cried mix, providing an easy way to sing across a wide range. Ah. Getting stuck in a cried mixed voice is, however, also the most common pitfall I see when people try to learn cry register. To avoid this, it helps to start from chest register, making it fairly bright to give easier access to cry register, and then making a sad facial expression with upturned eyebrows to get the crying sound to come in. Ah, 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 ah. Even having found this clear sounding cry register, there will still often be a tendency to get stuck in mixed voice when going high in pitch, in no small part because cry register tends to make the transition so easy that it is liable to happen by accident. To avoid this, it is important to make the mouth opening wide when going high in pitch, to allow the volume to rise, and to use bright twanged vowels and perhaps even making it a bit screamy as you go really high in pitch. One thing to note about cry register is that the crying quality stretches and thins the vocal folds, which puts a soft limit on the intensity and fullness that can be achieved. There is this Italian term, mezza voce, which means half voice, sometimes also translated less directly as singing off the voice as opposed to on the voice. I find these descriptors a helpful way to think about the volume limitations that apply to cry register and why we cannot easily dig into the sound and get a very dramatic cry register with a lowered larynx and so on. Such a fuller version of cry register is nevertheless possible, but it is difficult to do and will tend to become pressed if you are not already quite proficient at it. Thus, in the beginning at least, it is better to make it a bright sound with a high larynx. This is also helpful for subsequently learning pharyngeal voice, the topic of next week. If you do want a darker sound though, one option is to use another variant of cry register, namely sob register, which sounds like this. It is built on call register, but involves centralizing or closing the vowels just a bit and adding a crying quality. The easiest way to find it is to start from an O in call register, then add a sob to it while nudging the vowel slightly towards A. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
This sound is used a lot in musical theater and in show tunes because it has a way of taking the edge of call register, so to speak, rounding it out and creating a mellower tone. While sub register tends to be darker with a lower larynx and cry register, that is not what defines the distinction between the two. It is rather that cry register uses bright vowels with a broad tongue and typically a small distance between the tongue and palate, whereas sub register is spacious, giving the latter a soft wailing sound even when sung with a high larynx, whereas cry register tends to become more piercing or even whiny sounding. Sub register is also commonly used in crooning, sometimes for entire sections, sometimes just for an instant at the beginning of a note. In general, cry and sub register are both very useful for adding a little bit of musical interest by using them sparingly in a phrase otherwise sung mostly in chest register or call register, like this. I never wanna hear you say I want it that way. When it comes to vowels, cry register is quite versatile. The bright version, cried chest register, relies on front vowels, but for back vowels we can simply use sub register. Even so, there are a few things to note. For English speakers, the R vowel has a tendency to be too dark and spacious to do well with chest register or cried chest register, but assuming they have already gotten the hang of chest register, they will have learned to brighten the R vowel and produce it with varying degrees of frontness. This can often make it the easiest vowel in cry register, as all the front vowels do require a slight centralization compared to chest register in order to be maximally efficient, although they are still more fronted than in mixed voice. This point is most clearly illustrated using the E vowel. Here is a comparison of this vowel in chest register, cry register, and mixed voice. E For chest register, we need the E to be very fronted, whereas in cry register we can get away with a slightly lazier articulation. And in mixed voice it even needs to be a little bit slurred for the restrained quality to come in. However, as we go higher in pitch, it is important for the second formant to rise, that is, for the vowel to become more fronted again, lest we accidentally slip into mixed voice. The E vowel is too tense, so to speak, to be properly compatible with cry register, and will instead tend towards chest register, and become quite pressed if it is nevertheless attempted in cry register. Thus, we need to loosen it up, so to speak, by shifting it slightly towards the E vowel. Here are a couple of phrases from Don't Cry For Me Argentina, which demonstrate both the E vowel and the E vowel. It won't be easy, you think it's strange When I try to explain how I feel It won't be easy, you think it's strange When I try to explain how I feel It's a subtle difference, but it is very important. You can think of the vowels in chest register as being slightly more strident than the vowels in cry register. Another vowel to address is the U vowel, which can actually quite easily be used with either cry register or sub register, requiring either a slight increase or decrease in frontness, respectively. The sub register version will, however, enter second formant third harmonic tuning a lot sooner than the cry register version does and will gradually converge with the cry register as you ascend in pitch. Because this requires a quite drastic change of shaping, it is generally preferable to just go with the cry register version, unless the pitch is low enough, as in most crooning, for this to not be a concern. However, even the cry register version has to become quite fronted as you go up in pitch. And what's more, unless your larynx is very high and the volume quite low, it will run into the same problem as the E vowel, needing to be loosened in order to avoid pressing.
Thus, it has to gradually morph from U to O as you ascend in pitch, like this. Ooh. This transition can take a while to get the hang of, though, frankly, I still need some more practice to get it consistent myself. So it might be preferable to just switch to cried mix instead for high notes with the U vowel. And that's about it for today's video. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in a comment below. Stay tuned, remember to like and subscribe for more content, and as always, thanks for watching.